I just left. Too many county councilors here. And we are live. Excellent. Hello and welcome to the Social Services Committee uh, of Wednesday, September 7th. This is a joint committee between the City of Brantford and the County of Brant. The attendance has been noted by the clerk. Um, I just have to click a button here on my... There we go. Um, I just want to read the rules of procedure here, uh, just to remind members of committee, staff, and our viewing public that we have an electronic participation policy for hybrid meetings such as this. Uh, staff and delegates joining electronically, please keep your video and microphones off until requested by the chair or members of committee. All rules for delegation under the city's procedural bylaw continue to apply, and that corporate policy, number 50, regarding virtual participation in meetings is available online for review. In the event of a connection or service interruption uh, that affects quorum of the committee, we may recess the meeting for up to 15 minutes to regain quorum. Quorum. quorum is not achieved, the meeting will be adjourned. And just a note on attendance, we do have regrets from Councillor Sless, Councillor Wall, Councillor McCreary, and is that, I believe that's everyone, yeah. Um, are there any uh, declarations of conflict of interest for any of the items appearing today? Seeing none, we'll continue. Uh, are there any items the committee wishes to separate? Uh, Councillor Miller. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I think we separate 5-1 anyways, because there's a presentation, but I'll ask that we separate. I have a question on that. And also uh, 6.2. So 5.1 and 6.2 have been separated. Are there any others folks are wishing to see separated? Uh, Councillor Bell. Yeah, uh, 5.2, please. So 5.1, 5.2, and 6.2. Pretty much everything but the minutes, okay. Um, so I have a mover for Councillor uh, Miller's separations, but I actually forgot to get a seconder. Can I get a seconder for that, Councillor McAlpine? Mm -hmm. And I have the mover for uh, Councillor Bell. Can I get a seconder, please? Uh, Councillor Antoski is seconding. Just We have that on record now? Excellent. Okay, I'll call a vote on all the items that are not separated. All those in favor? And that carries unanimously. Um, we will actually begin, though, with a presentation. Uh, there's one presentation this morning. I'm going to ask Marlene Miranda, the General Manager of Community Services and Social Development, to come forward and provide a presentation regarding item 5.1, the draft social services budget. Uh, you have 10 minutes, uh, inclusive questions from the committee, although we can grant an extension if required. Please begin. Thank you, and good morning. Uh, through the chair, Marlene Miranda, General Manager of Community Services and Social Development. I am pleased to share the first operating and capital budgets for the shared service, um, shared, shared social services for 2023. The city and the county entered into a new shared service agreement for social services in November of 2021. As required under this agreement, the Social Services Committee is required to approve a draft budget prior to the end of September. This new agreement is in parallel with the process set out in the paramedic service agreement. The budget before you, um, budgets before you are built on the current consolidated municipal service manager service levels with growth in affordable housing. Next slide, please. So I will start with the operating budget and then we'll go into the capital. Um, so um, the city of Brantford is the legislative consolidated uh, municipal service manager for both the county and the city uh, for Ontario Works, housing and homelessness and children's services, including childcare and early years. These programs are jointly funded by the province of Ontario, the city of Brantford and the county of Brant. The CSSD Commission is made up of three departments, Family and Income Stability, which provides social assistance and other supports to individuals and families in need. Housing and Homelessness provides oversight to our rental units, delivers homelessness programs, and work with nonprofit housing providers and other levels of government to provide affordable housing options. Community Programs and Social Development Department, our third department, provides a wide range of community programs from children's services in early years to uh, age-friendly planning uh, and everything in between. For the purposes of the shared service budget, only the children's service and early years programs is presented today for this department. The remaining um, services will be brought forward to the City of Brantford's Estimates Committee. Next slide, please. Both the County of Brant and the City of Brant are growing rapidly, and with that comes increased demands for services and programs. We find ourselves in a, 
different uh, world post the global pandemic and economic uncertainties when services and supports are needed more than ever for all ages and life situations. The CSSD vision, Making Life Better Every Day Plan 2022 to 2032, was approved in July this year and will guide the Commission to provide these many important services and programs over the next 10 years with a focus on places, people, and partnerships. Children's Services will continue to implement the Canada-wide early learning and childcare programs, which will reduce parent fees for licensed childcare for children zero to five by 50% as of January the 1st. Housing and Homelessness Services will continue to administer services as mandated through the Housing Services Act, including the continued implementation of the updated 10-year Brant Brantford Housing Stability Plan and add to the affordable housing stock. Family and income stability will in continue responding to program delivery, staff and organizational structure changes associated with social assistance modernization and employment service transformation. Additionally, CSSD continues to find efficiencies to maximize resources to provide services. A couple examples include the CSSE's dub that I'll speak to in a bit that will reduce operating costs in future years and a review of the records retention and storage. Next slide, please. There are several impacts and challenges facing CSSD um, for this budget. Um, within Children's Services, the Ministry of Education funding allocations have not been received. Additional 100% provincial flow through funding for the Canada wide early learning and childcare program is expected, but the amount is unknown at this time. The Ministry has advised that they will be implementing a new funding formula for 2023, but deta with details expected this fall. Children's Services will undertake additional responsibilities related to facilitation of this program. Mm -hmm. Within housing, staff continue to actively pursue funding for other levels of government for housing and homelessness. Unknown or unrealized grants moving forward will directly um, impact forecasted costs for future city-owned affordable housing developments towards our, our goal of 500 new municipal um, affordable housing units. Within Family and Income and Stability, the Ministry of Children, Community and Social Services 2023 funding allocations have not yet been provided, and we have been frozen um, at the 2018 actual rate since 2019. Staff have been diligent in identifying offsetting efficiencies for the past three years. However, further efficiencies could neg neg negatively affect service delivery to our vulnerable community members. FIS continues to challenge, um, continues to be challenged to, in, um, to, con to respond to the pandemic, the changing ministry initiatives, working um, in different uh, venues remotely, um, the Ukrainian resettlement and surge in demand for Ontario works and financial assistance are all challenges we are working through. Additionally, inflationary pressures are impacting both the operating and capital budgets with the rate of consumer inflation and the supply chain and labor shortages are driving up the costs. Next slide, please. Given the inflationary pressures, the social impacts, provincial mandates and unknown funding, the 2023 base, um, the draft base operating budget being proposed in this report represents a 4.99% increase over last year and includes no unmet need requests. The main budget drivers um, within the report on table four are wages and benefits, repairs and maintenance, rent supplements and provider subsidies, some utilities, uh, transfer, of res uh, transfer of capital reserves to the LHC reserve, annualization of so the security program, property taxes and revenue increases such as rents. The budget is proportionate, the proportion between the city and the county on the basis of population and within the shared service agreement um, of 72% for the city and 28% for the county. The budget includes the county's adjustment for the second year of the three year phase in of the agreement. Next slide, please. So we'll now shift over to capital. Next slide. The 2023 drafts social service capital budget totals $25,854,401. The capital budget is separated between 
two growth projects representing new affordable housing builds, 16 state of good repair projects, major uh, repairs and improvements of our existing uh, local housing core properties, and four other projects. Um, in, and for other projects. Major projects comprised within this budget um, are, I'll, I'll just walk through some of the major projects. Um, under growth, the construction of the new 70 unit affordable housing development at 346 Shellard Lane is one of the growth projects. Within the state of good repair, some of the key projects include the security camera installation, phase three on various properties, the Daleview Gardens electrical services and wiring system, Riverside Gardens roof replacement, Northland Gardens parking lots, walkways and fencing, uh, Walker's green parking, which includes lot curbs, walkways and balcony doors, and the Trillium Way exterior improvements. Within the other projects, there is a CSC stub accommodation project. The impacts of the pandemic has shifted the work environment to a digital focus and the ability to work in, and our ability to work in different settings. The CSSD hub accommodation projects, although it is at $2.4 million, will reduce the square footage from 39,675 square feet to approximately 6,000 square feet and will generate a gross estimate, um, will generate a gross estimate of 400,000 operational efficiencies with payback in five to six years of the project completion. The draft capital budget is proposed to be funded under a variety of sources. With the county's commitment allocation of an estimated 11.9 million for Trillium Way, it is anticipated that the city will continue most of the capital costs, most of the capital funds for Shellard's Lane. As per table seven of the report, all other capital projects are cost shared and funded from the social housing capital reserve for the county uh, that the county has already co contributed to with the exception of the CSE's hub accommodation project. The CSSD hub accommodation project exceeds the available reserve balance and will require cost sharing contribution from both the city and the county, which is in within the report. In addition to the capital sources of funding, the maintenance of the service manager owned, managed current um, affordable housing stock is critical as it is aging. As you know, in 2001, assets owned by the Ontario Housing Corporation was transferred to various entities uh, through the Social Housing Re Reform Act 2000. A transfer of 379,000 has been funded uh, from the social housing operating budget and transferred on annually to the social housing capital reserve for the purposes of maintaining its assets in a good state of repair. Since its inception, the annual contribution to the reserve has not increased. Without an increased contribution, the 2023 capital budget as presented will not be affordable and there will be a funding shortfall over the 10 years of approximately half a million dollars. To support the critical repair and maintenance of the housing stock, an additional 70,000 has been included in the proposed social housing operating budget for 2023, increasing the annual contribution to 449,000. Next slide, please. So this slide is um, just providing an update on the progress of the Mayor's um, Housing Partnership Task Force Action Plan. Um, staff continue to explore and bring forward development opportunities in keeping with the Mayor's Housing Partnership Task Force goal of building 506 municipally owned units by 2030. The slide provides an update and represents the units that are completed and those at various stages of the approved uh, approval process. Staff continue to actively um, pursue community partnerships and funding of all levels of government to meet our goals. So Marlene Ave, as you know, was um, completed and occupied in 2020. 18 Sturton Ave was completed and occupied uh, late last year in 2021, 177 Colburn Street North. Um, I'm pleased to say that uh, the, the dirt has been moved and some foundations were being poured yesterday as well underway um, with modular builds um, being um, built off site and should be completed by the end of this year. 177 Trillium Way is also underway. Um, the design process is underway. Um, land swaps have been, um, will be completed shortly. Uh, 364 Shellard Lane um, will move forward next. And uh, more recently, 
36 to 40 Queen Street um, was agreed to move forward um, to, uh, with, to negotiate a purchase to consider um, retrofitting for additional units as well. In total, um, from we have 207 um, units out of the 506 that are well on their way. Several other sites are at various stages and will be brought forward to committee for consideration in the near future. Next slide. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank uh, the community service and social development staff and the finance team uh, for all their efforts and collaborations to develop the budgets presented this morning. And with that, the teams are here to answer any uh, questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and that went over the 10 minutes, but are we able to ask for a little extra time and folks? Thanks. Okay, well, we can do that then. So what we'll do is we'll we'll go to the item itself because it is on the floor and that'll reset the clock and allow everybody opportunities for questions. Um, so that is item 5.1, uh, the 2023 uh, draft social services budget, which I, I understand is the first time a budget will be approved at committee um, for this committee, which is great. Um, so do we have any uh, questions from anybody? Uh, first we go in the room and then online, Councillor Miller. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair, and I'll try to be as brief as I can. Uh, thank you to Marlene for that presentation. I think it's a fairly decent budget. Um, I just want to drill down a little bit on the uh, FIS uh, slash Ontario Works program, because that seems to be the biggest driver, uh, at least at the operating level, to the net levy of 8.14%. And uh, through, <coughs> through Mr. Chair to Marlene, you, you say that the... Um, program funding has been frozen at 2018 levels. And, and my understanding from talking to Anthony before the meeting is that is for the administrative portion only, is that correct? Good morning, Susan Evenden, Director of Family and Income Stability. Uh, thank you for the question, Councillor Miller. Uh, so the cost share budget uh, that you see before you is for the administration only. Um, any benefits that are flowed to social assistance recipients are 100% funded from the province. So the freeze does not apply to those costs. It applies to our administration costs. Okay, thank you. So 2018, we're in 2022. That's a five-year freeze, if my math is correct. Um, now, you you say that uh, this, the way the province is doing it, they kind of sliced and diced the program a little bit, trying to find some efficiencies. You say there's obviously limits to that efficiency. Um, the province comes out with their budget in 20, or sorry, in April of, of every year. Is it possible that any of this might change for the 2023 budget year? Through the chair, um, I would not want to go too far down the road of speculating uh, what the provincial government might do. Uh, but what uh, what we believe is that um, this particular funding formula uh, that we have has been in place for at least 10 years. Um, and there has been a lot of discussion about uh, modernizing the, the municipal and provincial um, program delivery funding. I do not believe that will happen in 2023. Um, it may happen in 2024. So long story short, I think we will have what we have for 2023. Now, that being said, we don't get any confirmation of our actual 2023 um, provincial allocation until sometime in the spring of next year. Okay. Um, thank you very much for the answer, Susan. Um, what I would su suggest, uh, Mr. Chair, and this will be, I'll, I'll bring this up uh, in the new term, but for a program to be funded for five now going on six years that that's a real cut <laughs> and uh i i know the 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 provincial government will point fingers at the the federal government for for you know underfunding health care and such but i think they should be careful when they call the kettle black so um maybe in the in the in the new year we might uh sit down as a group and talk about a delegation to 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 amo or something because i i think something like that is worthy of it so but i'll leave that at that and uh for something for us to consider in the future thank you good good questions and, and well stated um any other questions from anybody in the room okay anybody online have any questions for our staff Okay, right, we see some stunned faces in the room. That's wonderful. Uh, okay, great. We will move on. Okay, 
So if uh, what we'll do is we'll have the vote uh, on um, on this one, and then we'll go to questions on the next item. Okay. So we'll have the vote on this item again. Somewhat historic here. This is great. Uh, all those in favor of the 2023 draft social services budget. That carries unanimously. Excellent. Okay, moving on to 5.2. I believe you separated this, Councillor Bell. Did you, do you want to speak to this first? Uh, I did. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, it's a very simple question. Um, I, I just wanted to understand the uh, extent of, of work that is required in, in performing the duties that are described in this report by, uh, by our social services department and what the what the revenues are. Uh, sorry, they're, they're having a hard time hearing you, Councillor Bell. Can you speak into the uh, mic? Come bring it forward. Is that any better? That soft-spoken British. Yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'll repeat what I said then. Um, yeah, my, my, my question is very simple. I just need to understand a little bit more about the extent of the work that is required in, in servicing this particular um, uh, project and also what the size of the revenues will be. Staff? Good morning, Donna Kirshnoff, Manager of Housing Operations. Since 2020, uh, 2000, the year 2000, um, housing staff have been offering property management services to Slovak Village. Slovak Village consists of approximately 150 units, which are a mix of market and RGI. For one of our property managers, their average portfolio size would be uh, approximately 300 units. So for one FTE, it would take up, um, you know, th that is a very, very big, large portion of her portfolio. As well as the property manager, we also have other support staff that provide services to Slovak, and that would be a property management assistant, um, as well as our financial analysts, which would be, um, they're quite involved because uh, Slovak Village, they do have separate um, books and and we have to go through an audit process. Currently, the annual fees that are being paid to the city are approximately $70,000 per year. So the RFP, which is out right now, we have, um, you know, we, we, if there was going to be an increase, um, it's, it's confidential at this time. Um, but we have done um, um, a full analysis of the time that staff are spending to um, to support Slovak Village. And I think that our um, RFP would reflect the true amount of hours that we are um, putting in and the true costs that it would cost the city to be able to continue to provide these services. Thank you. So any other questions about this item in the room? Any questions online? Seeing none, we will call the vote. Uh, it is on the floor. So all those in favor of uh, this resolution. And that carries unanimously. Okay, we have one more item that has been separated and that's 6.2, the Ontario Works Quarterly Update. I believe, Councillor Miller, you asked for this to be separated. So I'll go to you first. I did, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Ontario Works Quarterly Update. Uh, case loads have gone up 28%. Uh, we predicted this last year. Mayor Davis and I, <laughs> um, but I, I'm not sure why. Um, I have my suspicions as to why. My question is, do we know why? And is it similar in other jurisdictions? Okay, staff. Keep through the chair. Um, I'm going to invite Anthony Labatt uh, to give you a more detailed answer to that question. Um, I do believe that we have a pretty good understanding of why. And I'll let Anthony speak to that. Thank you, Anthony. The floor is yours. Good morning, and through the chair. Um, yes, yeah, so we noticed an increase beginning to the caseload back in October 2021, and that was right around the time that the um, that the federal pandemic benefits came to an end. So <clears throat> we had that factoring into it, but we've also um, had other unique circumstances in which we've seen the cost of increase, um, sorry, the cost of living increase significantly over the past six months to a year as well. Uh, but the primary driver of that caseload increase uh, was due to the ending of the federal benefits. Okay, okay thank really you very much. Sense. And uh, we, we kind of, 
we we talked about this and, and that's what we thought. Um, second question then on page 106 of our package, um, not sure what page of the report, this is the statement it says infl inflationary costs uh, related to fuel and groceries, um, the recipient receiving 44% less. Can you just uh, give that to me in layman's terms, what that means? They're getting 44% less than the inflationary costs of fuel and groceries. So through the chair, um, the rates for social assistance have remained the same since about 2018. Um, so inflationary costs, uh, as we know, have driven up um, the amount of rent that folks are, the amount of money folks are gonna be spending on rent, but also in groceries as well. So when you factor that in, versus the amount of the social assistance rates that haven't gone up since 2018, you can easily understand that um, individuals in receipt of social assistance would be further behind um, than they were, say, four years ago. Okay, and just, uh, I'm going to try and wrap it up in, in my time. Um, and, and I talked to Anthony again before the meeting. You said uh, a single recipient gets somewhere between seven and eight hundred dollars a month. <laughs> I, I don't know how anybody survives on seven to $800 a month, but I see there's a few MPPs uh, trying to do that. I, um, and I know uh, at AMO there in Ottawa, one of the uh, speakers talked about for, for the Lenten period, which is 47 days, they tried to uh, live off of social assistance for, for that time. And uh, I guess it's, well, as you can imagine, it's, it's a real challenge. So I, it's, 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 I'll just express my frustration at a, a huge caseload um, for a program that pays 44% less than the deep poverty threshold. And um, just, Mr. Chair, I'll have a similar question uh, for the next meeting on rent arrears. So thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you, Anthony. Much appreciated. Uh, any other questions in the room? Any other questions? questions online. Um, I, I just have one comment to make that uh, kind of dovetails with Councillor Miller's comments. I, I've, I've lived on some of these systems and uh, it, uh, it, 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 it was better then, <laughs> right? Like within living memory, uh, it was uh, not great, but it wasn't uh, hellish either. And uh, now I think you could describe it as such, uh, especially with inflationary pressures, um, uh, costs of living, costs of rent, um, uh, food. Uh, and then also it's, it seems like it may be even more complex. Um, you used to get enough to get by and now um, it's very busy work being poor. And that's something we don't talk about a lot. Uh, and I know when I was chair of the Brantford Brant Roundtable on Poverty, um, the folks who were self-advocates who were there, um, they were some of the busiest people you met and they're next to CAOs and uh, of, of local organizations, right? Because of uh, that. And it's only gotten worse, actually, in, if you were, a, a, especially if you're a single recipient uh, in that time. So that's why the work we do here is so important. Um, I, I see no other questions. So what I'll do is, is I'll, I'll call the vote uh, on 6.2. All those in favor? And that carries unanimously. Thank you. Uh, there are no resolutions or no notices of motion. So what I'll do is uh, I'll adjourn this meeting uh, and proceed to the Brant uh, and Brantford Local Housing Corporation board meeting. And we will start that immediately. <laughs> so uh, welcome to that meeting. Uh, the role has been taken. We still have the same regrets uh, and the same attendance as the last meeting. Nobody's dropped out. No, nope, good. Uh, are there any declarations uh, of conflict of interest or pecuni pecuniary interest at this time? Oh, Councillor Miller, you need to... Um, Turn off your microphone. <laughs> Sorry. Um, none. Okay. We have no presentations or delegations. There are no items for considerations. Um, but could I get a mover and a second to replace all items for consent on the floor? Moved by Mayor Davis, seconded by Councillor Miller. Are there any items the committee wishes to separate for discussion purposes? Councillor Miller. Yes. Uh, 5.2, Mr. Chair, please. 5.2 will be separated for discussion. I'll call the vote on items, uh, all the other items, which is really just 5.11, the, the minute meetings. Um, all those in favor? Carried. Uh, okay, so now we'll consider 5.1. Um, again, Councillor Miller, because you asked for it to be separated, I'll go to you first uh, on 5.2, the second quarter report of the operations of the Brant and Brantford Local Housing Corporation. Okay, uh, sticking with the theme from the previous uh, meeting, Mr. Chair, um, 
again, we see a, a huge increase, a huge spike. Well, I think it's a huge spike in uh, rent arrears. And I just wondered if anybody from staff could, could speak to um, what we're seeing and maybe talk about some of the underlying issues. Thank you. Who wants to tackle that one? Good morning, Donna Kirshnoff, Manager of Housing Operations through the chair. Um, what we're experiencing is um, a great factor that contributes to the increase in the arrears is the delay at the landlord and tenant board. So the delays, typically in the past, we would be able to have a hearing um, if, if we had a tenant that had arrears within four to six weeks. Now what we're seeing is a delay between six to seven months right now. So as we have applications in front of um, an adjudicator, uh, we're waiting for a hearing. And then once we do get to the hearing, um, adjudicators are willing to give um, our tenants opportunities to enter into repayment agreements. Uh, we do have a robust uh, eviction prevention program. We don't want to see individuals evicted, but we do make sure that our tenants are accountable and that they do pay their rents. So we may see um, delays in any type of eviction activity. And um, what we're doing is entering into long-term repayment agreements. And this is to avoid eviction. So that has had a huge impact on the arrears over the last year. Just a follow-up question, Mr. Chair. Um, do you do you foresee a time, like if it stayed at this level, would we see this impact um, our operating budgets at the, at the like the, the our levies? So uh, through the chair, um, we can't commit or guarantee that it won't, um, but the subsidy should offset the costs um, with the arrears, so it shouldn't impact the uh, levy operations. Okay, but <laughs> sounds like something to keep an eye on and anyway, so okay, thank you. Are there any other questions? Any in the room? Any online? I think we lost Councillor Howes, but we still have form. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so I'll call the vote on this one, uh, 5.2. Um, are there, who's in favor? And again, that carries unanimously. Okay, um, I'm just gonna take a moment here as chair before I move to adjourn. And I, I just wanna say um, a couple of things, so bear with me. I'll, I'll give myself a timer here so I don't go over my time. Uh, but I, I just wanted to, to say a, a big thank you uh, to our staff here. Um, to, to Lisa and Norris behind the scenes, to all the social services department staff, um, and many of whom are here today, many of whom are watching, our, our CAOs, Brian Hutchings and um, Michael Bradley, um, for the work they've done to get this uh, iteration of this committee set up. Uh, and also two previous chairs during this term, uh, Councillor, uh, former Councillor Rick Weaver and Councillor uh, McCreary, um, and the vice chairs as well, uh, as well as all members of this committee uh, for the work that uh, we've been able to do uh, over the last four years and also um, recently. Now, many of the faces around this table are not running again. So this is the last time you'll be at one of these meetings. So you get your Wednesday mornings free. Uh, and uh, I'm in that same boat. But I just want to say that um, this has been really meaningful for me as a service user uh, in the past locally, uh, a poverty advocate locally, a social worker locally in both communities, uh, a social services and justice studies educator, uh, but more, more actually as a kid from Eagle Place. Right, and this is probably the last time I'll be able to say that with any sort of meaning, so I appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> this is a, a great uh, committee. We've had wonderful testimony from people who have been affected uh, deeply by the work that we do. Um, and also some of the great things that we've been able to do, our first ever budget approved at committee, 200 um, affordable housing uh, units uh, either built or approved. Um, Again, uh, services wrapping around some of those housing um, uh, pieces to make life better for people, and not just the service users, but the people in those neighborhoods, uh, and a record investment in uh, social services and housing uh, from both communities. Uh, uh, enhanced services for the County of Brant, um, which I think is so important, along with our new governance and structure. Uh, and this has all been done over the last four years with uh, the world on fire, as some people would say, and also very isolated. Um, so I, I thank everybody uh, who works hard on the social services and uh, the sort of community work that is done uh, in both of our communities uh, for the public good. And I think it's uh, important work 
And I am excited to have uh, 10 years of uh, explaining some of these scenarios and using some of the case studies uh, for my students uh, at the college uh, and uh, staff will probably be calling you to come guest lecture a couple of times. So uh, again, I just wanna say a big thank you. Uh, this has been a wonderful experience for me, uh, really meaningful and I think um, difficult work, but really important. So thanks again. And with that, I will call this meeting adjourned. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. County folks are free to go. <laughs>
Here we are. So we have waited uh, 15 minutes and uh, we did make an effort. Thank you, Councillor Vanderstelt, to reach out to the other three members and neither, uh, none of them can attend. So uh, we're not going to be able to have a meeting this morning of the Brant Brantford Local Housing, the Brantford Local Housing Corporation. Hopefully we will be able to add it as an agenda item to the September 27th combined. Kyle will have to see what the agenda, how that works for that evening, because there is one decision item having to do with the expenditure of $9,000. So we'll see if we can fit it in that night. Um, everybody have a great day. Bye-bye.